Or am I? Or... No, not in general. <sighs> oh, you're lucky to be here, too. You were the last pulled out of the crash. Do you remember? What about the others? Sarah and Victoria are all right. I was talking to Victoria, telling her they'd come and rescue us. I can't remember anything after that. Her and Sarah have got a few broken bones, but they'll mend. And Seth seems to have come through OK. Thank God for that. A few that didn't do so well. I mean, there's three dead so far. Pete was killed on impact. Uh, the doctors are examining our butch now. Hey. Well, he's took a bit of a battering, but well, he's a dingle. He'll be back on his feet soon. Oh, I hope so, Zach. Everyone's been wondering how you are. Yeah, Chris Tate waited through the night till he was sure you were rescued. He's been uh, ringing in ever since for reports. Never knew he had an art. Mm. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave Mrs. Glover to rest now. It's OK, I feel fine. I'll be the judge of that. I've got some friends in the hospital. Can I go and see how they are? Tomorrow, maybe. Right now, you need to sleep. Well, I ought to be getting back to Butch. <laughs> I'll check in on you later. Any coffee left? Um, yeah, help yourself. In future, I'd be grateful if you didn't interfere with my son's life. Hey? <laughs> Don't you realise what you put us through? We thought that you were both on that bus. We had a good time together. There was no harm done. He was supposed to be at school. I told Claudia I was tucking him. And she should never have let you. And I made that quite clear to her. One more incident like this, and she's out of a job. I think you're overreacting a bit. Your opinion doesn't interest me. I've got more important things to worry about. I'm taking Joseph to visit Cathy. See you this afternoon for the board meeting. Not stuck up for me. I couldn't. Because I think Chris is right. I think you did behave very irresponsibly. Get a life, so I just gave the kid a day out, that's all. Well, next time you have a bright idea, ask first. Hello. And kiss them. Uh, there you go. Oh. The doctor says that I can go home now. Can you come too? No, I'm afraid I can't, my darling. Mummy's got quite a poorly leg. It's going to take us a little while to get her on her feet again. But what about my birthday? Well, you can still have your party. And then we can bring you in to see Mummy, and you can have another one. <laughs> You've got to sign my plaster. I have. Thanks. And all the kids on the ward. I'll write very small, so there's room for everyone else. Big kiss. <laughs> and you. Are you sure you'll be all right on your own with all the kids? Of course. The boys' school shirts need washing and, and Andy's PE kit needs ironing. Sarah, I'll manage. And if I get any problems, there are plenty of helpers. It's the one good thing about a time like this. Everyone pulls together. I'm moving in. Yeah, Betty's giving me some emergency supplies. Doesn't look like the shop will be open for a while. Guess I chose a bad time to move in. A lot of people are very glad you arrived when you did. Just glad to help out. You're going to have a job on your hands at the vets, with Paddy injured and Zay busy at Tate Haulage. Be a lot of work all round. Yes. 
Well, we survived a plane crash. We'll get through this. From what I've seen of the people around here, I'm sure of it. You've all made me feel very welcome. I hope you'll be very happy at Mill Cottage. Thanks. How are you feeling? I'm OK. There's a lot of people worse off. We're so worried about you. Yeah. Zach told me how you waited. Brought a lot of memories back from the plane crash. Me too. I'll always be grateful the way you nursed me through that. I know we can't... We can't change what happened. But I hope you'll give me the chance to make it up to you now. I want to do anything I can to help you. There's plenty of people who need help more than me. Maybe. But it's you I care about, not them. If there's one thing I've always admired about you... It's your drive. If you used all that energy and ambition to put the village back together, you'd really be doing some good for a change. You always were an idealist. You said you wanted to help. Well, it's never been needed more. OK, kids, break it up. What is your problem? We've got no school today. We've got nothing to worry about. Yeah, you have. Just had Viv on the phone. She wants Cinderella back home to do her chores. Hey? Apparently there's a big mess after the bus crash. She's not clearing it up on her own. I suppose I'd better go then. Unless you've got a fairy godmother up your sleeve. She's handed in her right mood. I'll call you when we're finished. <sighs> I thought we were never going to get rid of her. She's supposed to be your mate. Not anymore. She's only got eyes for you. Why didn't you just tell her to get lost? Me and Donna are getting on fine. At least we would if you kept your nose out. I thought it was Trisha you fancied. That's different. Why, cos Donna's available and Trisha ain't? Well, it's not like that. I reckon it is. Maybe I should have a word with Donna. As a mate. Just keep out of this, Ollie. Is he gonna be OK? Well, his blood pressure's normal, but he still seems very tender to the stomach area, so I'd like to carry out a few more tests. It's all right for us all to visit, though. Of course, but try not to tire him too much. Doc seems to think you're on the mend, son. Yeah. I'll be glad when I can get back home. Of course you will. Your family round you and a bit of home cooking. Better cure than anything they've got in here. Didn't Lisa come? I mean, what's your... I just didn't want to intrude. Don't be daft. She shouldn't be here. She's not family. Don't start. Butch wants her here and I won't have him upset. I got me miracle, Butch. Hey? Like I told you in the ambulance. I knew everything would turn out all right. I still don't know how it could have happened. It was one of those tape trucks Mrs. Windsor's always complaining about. It just sort of went out of control. When you delivered that lot, you've got another load to pick up from Ullman's in Birmingham. This afternoon? We're running out of hours. Well, not if you drive quick. And if you don't, well... You might pick up something else down there to pass the time. <laughs> Not me. I got in enough trouble for that my first day. Sean Reynolds nearly busted me for chatting up his daughter. He told me she was 18. You're not another one of those kids, are you? No. I'm definitely over the age of consent. I'm married. My husband's absolutely gorgeous. There's just no perks in this job. Mm. Mind you, I guess I'll be lucky to keep it the way things are going. What do you mean? And that crash ain't going to be good for business. There must be a chance they'll be laying drivers off. What's the word in the office? We don't pay you to stand around gossiping, Kelly. Get back to work. Look, we were just chatting. And wasting good driving time. If you want to know company policy, you'll have to wait for the official statement like everyone else. Uh, just, just all my love, Chris. Thank you. Bit over the top with the flowers, weren't you? I think it's a very nice gesture. I'd like to get this board meeting started as soon as possible. Well, I'll get the meeting on the agenda. Thank you, Kelly. 
When you've done that, I suggest you take a long one, Sharon. But won't you be needing me for the meeting? No, I'll be taking the minutes myself today. You'll have plenty of time to go into the village. I'll uh, give you a call on the mobile if we need you again. Why are you getting rid of Kelly? There are sensitive issues to discuss. I've already caught her gossiping with the drivers. I thought we were here to talk about the accident. Didn't realise it was all going to be top secret. There were two tape vehicles involved, three dead, more in hospital. We're in big trouble. So we have to face up to our responsibilities. I guess we won't be able to avoid compensation claims, but our insurance should cover them. Maybe, but those cases are bad publicity and they can drag on, which isn't going to be good for business. And that's just the start of it. You mean it'll get worse? Well, right now, people are shocked by what's happened, but it won't be long before they start to get angry, looking for someone to blame. And their finger will point at us. How we handle this crisis will determine whether this company goes forward or goes under. That's what this meeting's about. I put too much into this company to see it taken away from me now. Tate Haulage is going to survive, whatever it takes. Hi, I'm Adam Forrester, the new vet. Hi, I'm Adam. Uh, Roy Glover. This is my wife, Kelly. Alan was saying that you used to work at the surgery. I was hoping you could give me a few tips. Right. What the farmers like around here? Well, I can be a bit suspicious of anyone that's not Dale's born and bred, but they'll be OK once they get used to you. And how long's that going to take, then? About ten years, if you're lucky. Get everyone in the village to write on this. <laughs> well, I'll get Bernice and Trisha to look in on you. <laughs> uh, how's Sarah? Oh, a bit more serious, I'm afraid. She's on morphine for the pain, and they're going to have to pin the bone together, so she'll be in for a while. Well, do, do you want any help with the children? Oh, no, you and Bernice have done enough already. I'm really grateful, but I can't put you to any more trouble. That's no trouble at all. The boys are with Betty, and, I, and I'm sure she'd love to have Victoria give you a chance to get to the hospital and spend some time alone with Sarah. Thanks, Alan. I know I'm new to the area, but I have got plenty of ideas for the practice. We could really make something of it. Well, I wish you luck. The trouble is, Zoe's from a rich family, so she don't need to make money. But it's just obby for her. Um, I, I was wondering, would Sean have time to see me today? I doubt it. There are meetings all afternoon. Uh, I really don't think I could get behind the wheel of that bus again. I'm sure no-one blamed you for what happened, Alan. It doesn't stop the memories coming back. Maybe they'll give up the service after this. Well, I'm not allowed to know anything like that. Seems like, from now on, any important decisions are going to be made behind closed doors. As directors, I presume you're all aware we can be held liable for any offence of the company. I would therefore suggest that no-one makes any statement about the crash that's not been previously agreed by this board. Oh, you mean official statement, yeah. You're not suggesting we don't talk about it to anybody in the wool pack or on the street? Well, we're all going to have to meet villagers in our everyday lives, but I'd still stress extreme caution, even in casual conversation. Don't you think you're overreacting? I mean, these people are our friends. No, that's a bit naive, Zoe. Well, we both know there are people who've always resented the power the Tates have got round here. They'd use anything they could to bring us down. It would be natural to express some regret over the dead and injured. But please avoid any form of words that could later be quoted in court as implying any guilt on behalf of the company. The company is going to be cooperating fully with the Department of Transport Investigation. We can then say that it would be inappropriate for us to make any further comment till that investigation has reached its conclusions, which will buy us some time. I've drafted an initial press statement that meets these criteria. If it's approved by this board, I suggest we release it at once. I really hope we can learn something from all this. I certainly have. It's made me realise how much you mean to me. I want to start planning our future. I want a little cottage after we're married. Near enough so you can visit your family. But somewhere where we can be alone together. Maybe of that family we talked about. Butch. 
Butch. Doctor, it's Butch. There's something wrong. I hope this meeting isn't just going to be about press statements and strategies. Surely we need to talk about the people who've suffered through this accident, mm. what we can do for them. Right, and we can start with Pete. He died working for this company. Well, I think we should defer making any decision on that till we've heard the results of his post-mortem. I mean, if any trace of alcohol or drugs what are found in What are you talking his... about? Pete was a good driver and he was a mate of mine. We can't afford to get emotional about this, Sean. I presume that driver negligence or error will be easier for us to deal with than some verdicts. Lisa, I'm afraid there's a board meeting in progress. We can't allow outsiders in. Well, I'm sorry, but I think you should hear what I've got to say. It's about the accident and what might have caused it. <laughs> then I think we should hear her out. Please go on. Well, as you know, I've been a bit behind on the service contract. But I warned Pete his truck wasn't ready to take out and I don't think he'd have ignored that. Well, of course not. He's an experienced driver. I mean, he'd never take out a vehicle he thought was dangerous. So I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about. But thanks for drawing it to our attention. We'll look into it straight away. So you don't think I'm at fault, then? Well, uh, it's not for me to decide, Lisa, but right now I'm sure it's much more important that you're at the hospital, helping Butch to make a good recovery. You must have a lot of well wishes. Mm, they're all from Chris. Oh. It's a bit embarrassing, really. Why don't you take some over for Sarah? Oh, thanks. I'd cheer her up a bit. She's going to have a birthday in here and Miss Victoria's party. Well, maybe we can organise something at the diner when she gets out. Mm. We uh, both wanted to thank you for what you did for Victoria in the crash. Seems like chatting to you is what kept her going. She's not in his bed. I'm afraid Mr. Dingle's condition has deteriorated quite rapidly. He's been taken for an emergency scan. What's wrong? I'll have a better idea of that when we get the results. In the meantime, I can assure you, we're doing everything we can. Hi, Lisa. All seem to be on the mend, eh? You're the one who brought Laura to the board when you thought she'd keep me and Sean in line. I'm just beginning to see sense in it. Because she'll help you sweep any bad news under the carpet. No, she's good in a crisis. But I do think it's something we should discuss in private. In the way again, am I? No, of course not. But we do have rather a lot to discuss. You know, dealing with the aftermath of the accident. That matters to me too, you know. Pete was a mate. We had good times together. Like when you nearly had us nicked for drinking a few beers. We're all sorry about Pete's death. Big difference. I'm upset about him. You're just worried it might be bad publicity for your precious company. No, that's not true. Oh, save it, Zoe. If I hear any more, I might just throw up. I ought to go after her. You're wasting your time. Face it, Zoe. She's a driver. You're a company director. You'll never see this the same way. Being a director doesn't mean that I don't have feelings. But it does mean you've got to get your priorities right. And we've got a lot of work to get through. Betty's made a casserole I can heat up tonight. And she's done some ironing too, so uh, things will be all right for the kids when they go back to school. You seem to have everything organised. Yeah. Never realised how much you housewives have to do. You try and appreciate it a bit more when you get back. That'll make a change. Mind you, it's uh, not just me and the kids who are missing you. Young Richie seems quite worried about you. Oh, I expect he's just being polite. Well, I don't think so. He's quite concerned about how long they're going to keep you in. <laughs> I think he's got quite fond of you. It'll mean extra fuel costs. But in the short term, I think we ought to reroute the trucks and avoid going through the village. I can't believe how cold-blooded you're being about all this. <sighs> I'm just being practical. We have contracts to honour, so these decisions have to be faced. And what about the people who died in the accident, Chris? When do we 
face up to our part in that. That is exactly what we've been discussing all day. Is it? I wish I could believe that you really cared for any of them. Oh, grow up, Zoe! Just because I don't wear my heart on my sleeve like you do, it doesn't mean I don't have feelings. You know how much I owe to Cathy. I sat and I watched the rescue teams, thinking that one of my trucks had killed her. Imagine what that did to me. I'm sorry, I... I'm sure it must be hard for you too. And it's not going to get any easier. If you really want to help the people in the village, then you'll help the company. That way, they'll have jobs and money, which will be a lot more use to them than all your sympathy. We don't know much more than you, just that his blood pressure started going down. Is that serious? Well, I am to have the odd set by being trapped in that breakfast so long. But I know how much. He'll soon bounce back. <laughs> hey, remember when he had that fall off a tractor when he were a nipper? Never seen so much blood. <laughs> you were right as rain next day. Same with calls and flu, never bothered him. All the time he missed school, when he were on the sky. Strong as an ox, Butch. Takes after my side of the family, see. So, what's the verdict? I'm afraid the scans revealed your son has a large internal bleed. It seems there's a laceration to his liver. Right, well, you can deal with that. We're certainly going to try. Can I talk to him? He's already under anaesthetic. It's important we get this operation done as soon as possible. What are his chances, Doctor? We wouldn't be operating if we didn't think there was some chance of success. I'll let you know as soon as there's any news. We can't do anything, Emily. It's up to the doctors now. <laughs>